Right, hello everyone. Welcome to this Wednesday webinar uh, that's on a Tuesday this week. Um, it's half term, so we thank you very much for giving up your precious time to come and uh, listen to us talk. Um, today it's all about sports. I thought it would be a good idea to give everyone a bit of an update on what the situation is with sports, or rather find out for myself what the update uh, is on uh, sports in America um, in the last round and what we can expect from the next round. And I'm pleased to have with me two fantastic experts, uh, both from Aspire USA. Uh, we've got Brett Taylor and Jack Barnby. Um, Brett, do you want to give a bit of an introduction to yourself, first of all? Yeah, hi, um, Jason. Thank you so much for allowing me to come on this. Uh, always an honour to uh, work with you and support you guys in helping sort of people interested in looking at the USA. Uh, my history is I was, or I am a teacher or uh, was a qualified teacher, uh, then went into professional rugby. I played for Northampton Saints and coached in two World Cups, uh, 2003 and 2007. That's where my love for the USA came on board. I coached the men's national team in those two World Cups, um, then continued to sort of delve into professional rugby until I had the opportunity to work for Holly Cram, who is the founder of Aspire and kind of got the best of both worlds now in terms of my academic and my sporting sort of, you know, environment to help support, you know, young people that are looking at the opportunities in the USA, which are amazing. Brilliant. Thanks, Brett. And also very pleased to be joined by, uh, I think, Aspire's newest team member, Jack Barnby. Jack, do you want to give an introduction to yourself? Yeah, hi everyone. Uh, thanks for letting me join. Um, yeah, I'm fairly new to Aspire, um, but yeah, I, I worked sort of with, with another, another agency before, um, but previously I was a professional football player. Um, I started at Man United, started my career there, turned professional there, um, then went to Leicester City, uh, managed to see them obviously win the league, which was, which was pretty special. Um, went on loan to a few teams, uh, Hartlepool, Notts County, Rotherham, and then subsequently went to America, played in the MLS uh, for the Portland Timbers and the USL for San Antonio and Phoenix Rising. So lived over in America for six years. Uh, amazing experience. Um, yeah, obviously I didn't, didn't quite do the college route, but obviously living there for six years, I got to see you know, all different types of colleges when I traveled with, with football. Um, and yeah, like, like Brett said, the facilities are just incredible. Um, you know, they give you every opportunity to, to succeed on and off the pitch. So, uh, so it was handy for me to sort of get into this, this line of work, uh, helps me sort of with young athletes and, you know, predominantly I will be working with footballers, but you know, I've got other passions as well, like golf and, and whatnot. So, um, so yeah, here I am. And, you know, we want to be able to just pass on the experience to, to everybody else. Brilliant. Thanks, Jack. I don't think I've ever met a footballer who didn't play golf. <laughs> yeah. I'm, well, I'm, actually, I'm actually aware at the minute playing golf, so, <clears throat> yeah. Um, brilliant. Well, it'd be really good to have your input today and, to, and your knowledge about soccer, and especially, as you said, being able to talk about what the facilities are like in America, because I think that's one thing um, that is quite exciting for students who are thinking about going over for sports. Now, I'm going to share my screen, and I've got the world's shortest presentation here, but just with a few talking points. Um, if I go on to the next slide. So just to let all the, um, the attendees know, if you want to ask questions, please pop them in the Q&A box. Um, if they're pertinent, I will um, get them answered straight away. Otherwise, we'll answer them at the end. It's going to be quite organic today. We're just going to talk a little bit about what's been going on with sports, what we think the predictions are. Um, and take any of your questions as well. So in no particular order, Brett, this is probably a good question for you. What did 2022 look like? Because presumably you now know where most of your students from the last round will be going and playing. Um, where is that and how successful was it? And, uh, and what does it look like? Yeah, pretty successful. I, I've got to say my chosen sport is rugby and we're actually, you know, still placing and we're actually still placing soccer, Jack and I. It's been quite an interesting one because of COVID. Um, a lot of the juniors and seniors were given an extra year, a fifth year. Um, so there was kind of like a waiting game, um, and, you know, for people to either commit or not commit. So um, 
we are still working for 2022s and and there are a lot of coaches kind of going wow we, we you know we need we need we need because people have chosen to go on, on you know on different routes um in terms of sports and interest in sport it is as huge as it has ever been um you know for us i think if you, if you look at our stats i'm not trying to sell us as, as a company but um you know I, I think we're up to something like five million in scholarships this year um you know lots of stanford's lots of yales um lots of ivy leagues but then that that list below so your wake forests um your northeasterns and then you know you've even got you know you go to your endicott's and your wayne state so what i've really liked about where we're going is there's been a real diverse opportunity for individuals and they've chosen those um the the ivy leagues i i i think and, and sort of the top end i think you know you might concur to this i think there was a 2.6 success rate this year um you know to get into those universities so you know to people out there that are going i want to go to a yale i want to go to a harvard i want to go to a princeton then let me just tell you it's tough um i you know i i think this has been again even after last year i think going to those types of universities has has you know been even tougher um you know we've been lucky enough to, to get you know student athletes in, into those into those colleges but it's it's not been easy uh I, I think the biggest learning curve for us is is to work with families to sort of educate them about different opportunities as well and and to also look at the multitude of other universities that, that, that are over there as well because it, it is getting tougher and tougher and tougher to get into name brands um you know i i think there was a there was a stat that it's like 20 percent to get into oxford or cambridge and as i said 2.6 to get into brown um so you know for us in terms of reflecting on the data of this year it, i i think I'd, our kind of policy in speaking to parents is you know if, if and families is if you've just got princeton cornell and university of pennsylvania on your list then you know we think you do actually need to broaden your horizons and if you're willing to go and do that the usa is a great place for you if you're not it's going to be tough and you know that that's that's the, the kind of the hard you know the harsh reality of of going into the usa at the moment um you know there are some great sports that have just come on board as ncaa so you know triathlon has just come on board which is brilliant they've now got 40 colleges that are looking so any triathletes out there you know there are new sports that are, that are being looked at as as you know scholarship sports or varsity sports um but it's been as busy as ever you know there has been not just us but you know obviously we look at other companies that 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 you know do this as well and it's been really exciting and there's been a great uptake and there have been some great opportunities for international students um do i think it's going to get easier no um, I think there's going to be it's going to be more competitive and, you know, Jack and I's you know, biggest advice when we sit down with with individuals and have our initial zoom is, you know, you've really got to understand the process and make the most informed decision that you possibly can, because, you know, more and more people are looking at the global education village as, as a whole. And, and, you know, the USA is a major part of that. Mm. Yeah, thanks. And uh, that message about admit rates being very low at Ivy League universities. Um, I mean, really, if you look at the top 50 universities in America, those admit rates are very, very low and dropping. Um, and there's lots of reasons for that. Um, it's interesting that's also the case in sports, but I think what it, it does really bring home is the importance of having a good wide range of colleges that you're applying to and everywhere on that list you should be happy to go to that's always our advice for academics as well um just to answer one question that popped in the q a someone asked us to clarify what we meant by this round i what i mean is the last round in terms of students who are about to go off to university this august slash september um we uh, the rounds tend to to finish in kind of may time if you like because that's when people make their decisions most of the time um and in terms of uh, soccer, Jack, I, I know that you've only joined recently, but um, what does that look like for, for UK students at the moment? Because obviously soccer has always been uh, a popular sport, and I know that students have been going over to America for that for a long time. Is that increasing? Is it getting harder? Um, 
Yeah, I, I mean, to, to add on to, to sort of what, what Brett was saying, I think, you know, when we obviously speak to families and, um, you know, these kids that want to go over, uh, boys and girls, so, I mean, even if you look at the soccer side, I mean, you know, the US probably leads the way in terms of, you know, I mean, obviously the women's national, the American women national team is very good. The, the league over there is very good. Um, you have to be committed to it. Um, you know, you have to want to go and do it and you have to put your all in. You can't just go there and think, oh, well, this will be easy because it's America. That's that's certainly not the case. And what I've found is if you have to look at the MLS now um, and trickling down to grassroots football in America, it is getting far more competitive and it's getting bigger and bigger. Um, they're not just buying players at the end of the careers anymore in the MLS. And and certainly these college coaches, they will just recruit anybody. They'll do, they'll do their, you know, work and they'll look at all the, all the footage and, get all the data, data stats and stuff like that. So it's, yeah, it's, it's, it's pretty intense how they do it. But if you go there with, with that mindset of you want to succeed, then there's no reason why it won't do well. Um, but yeah, it's certainly a good option. And, and I know that, you know, some kids maybe think that they might have been released from academies or whatever, and they think it's the end of the world, which I understand. Um, but it's certainly not. And it's certainly just another pathway. Um, plus you get a four year degree behind you um, and a life experience. So, yeah, it's definitely something that I would recommend. Um, you know, I know I, I know I was already a pro when I went over there, but if it was a chance of me dropping down leagues and leagues and leagues in England um, or going to America for four years guaranteed football and a good education, a good life experience, uh, it's something that, like I said, I'd always advise to do or, or at least think think properly about it because it, it is a really good pathway. Great, thanks. Okay, moving on. Brett, what, you've touched on this a little bit already um, in terms of just how much more competitive it's getting, but did, were there any big changes in this last round? So those students who are, who've just been admitted or the, maybe the ones who've been disappointed, um, what were the big changes in terms of what the, the landscape looked like for sports admissions? As I said, obviously there was the, the knock-on effect from COVID um in terms of size of rosters and whether juniors and se seniors were staying on for that extra year I, I think that had a major impact in people that were looking for scholarships or merit aid dependent on on you know where they were going um this is obviously now kind of coming to the end um which i think will will obviously make it harder for coaches because i think coaches felt obliged to look at look at seniors and juniors because they 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 missed that year or you know or, or a year, year and a part um i i also think that there is um a lot of these universities are coming more becoming more competitive and i think that's a really good thing um there are more and more sports universities across all the ncaa sports and all the club sports and varsity sports so you know that there are a multitude of, of different sports um um, there are more opportunities out there now. You know, I, I alluded to, you know, last couple of weeks, NCAA, you know, taking on triathlon, which I think is brilliant. You know, it's taken them eight years to get to this point. And, and now that they've got that, for my chosen sport, there's now a, a new kind of college super league on the East Coast. Um, you know, you, you're looking at the growing sports in terms of sailing. You know, I, I've been working with skiers. Um, I'd that there are more opportunities that you there are more um i think opportunities for dare i say it the lesser sports so you know not just you know the, the big five in terms of you know your american football your baseballs etc cetera, etc cetera. but you know if you want to go to, to to those colleges and you want to go and have that sporting experience um you don't have to be an international standard sports person to go and have that experience uh and that's really come out because there are more and more you know colleges growing in terms of what they want to do and growing let dare i say it, the kind of the, the you know the, the lesser sports uh, i've you know I've literally before this just had a conversation with with a triathlete um and suddenly you know he didn't realize that now you know this is bona fide it's it's right you know th th this this could be a great opportunity for me to go and do a sport that i love internationalize my degree and even potentially look at you know continuing my junior gb you know pathway so um i think that i i think from an academic perspective for me it is um 
being really realistic uh, you know it is tough you know as you said the top 50 i agree with you we placed a lad at ucla you know i think that's um, that's 3.2 i think i did on the stats so it's it's getting tougher to to go and you know look at those name brands but as, as we keep saying it's you know there are other great universities over there you know i i remember listening to you in you know there are 4500 there are different levels and things like that and i i think the big changes are yes it's it's tougher but there i think people are are more willing to to look at different experiences and different options and i think it's these universities that are actually benefiting from this mm -hmm. and the whole kind of talent pool or the whole opportunity or the, or the whole kind of level of especially from a sporting environment is is getting better and better and you know i i know how the americans work and they love winning and you know it's it, it, it's it's been great to see but it's um i can see the ncaa probably getting a little stricter in certain things and, and stuff like that you know with, with the amount of numbers that are coming in but we're not there yet mm. i think they're just incredibly happy that they've got through a covid period um a lot of universities cut sports you know i take stanford as an example that i think they cut 11 to 13 sports mm. two years ago and they're now being introduced so you know um sports the sports arena or the sports environment in the usa is is is, is getting stronger and stronger and, and, and i'm really happy by that because we live in that arena and we work in that arena but it's also going to be tougher and our advice would be just be open-minded please be open-minded in terms of the opportunities out there yeah and, and just to touch on that what, what you mentioned about stanford and other colleges cutting lots of sports during the pandemic it so am i right in saying that, that they've all come back now because not all, not all have come back um there's still some that are kind of fighting for their that their their place but the majority of you know have come back and mm -hmm. it, it's it, I, I think there was a fair amount of pressure on them i i would say you know that most of them have have got back into in, into the route i mean the biggest one obviously that we felt was field hockey mm. um you know which was you know a huge huge blow for you know but you know i tip my hat to holly i think she's placed she placed four at stanford in a week this you know in a couple, couple of you know months ago which is which means the coaches are now trying to rebuild and they've gone through this re rebuilding process and there is no better place in the world with coaches and the facilities and the, the sports that they have to rebuild their sports. Mm -hmm. So some some are kind of still getting back, but you know the major ones, especially for girls in field hockey, are, are now really really robust in terms of the universities that, that they're at. Mm, brilliant. Okay, let's move on. Um, what were the because we've talked about the opportunities that there are now and the um, well the, the great fact that so many sports are coming back and that there's never been a better time um but what were the mistakes that people made in the last round um and what are the sort of common mistakes that people make when they're thinking about applying to university with sports um for us i think it's um it's looking at name brands and then being disappointed when you can't get in um it, you know I, I know we keep harping on at this but th there are such great opportunities and you know we as a company and I'm not to say right at the start, I'm not trying to sell Aspire, but, you know, if people speak to, you know, companies that, that help families look at the USA, I think the fit is really, really important. And uh, the common mistakes are I only want to go to Stanford, Princeton, UCLA, Cal Berkeley. Um, you know, let's make sure that we, you know, be more open minded to, 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 to you know, to the universities um i think really being honest about the financial landscape and uh you know right at the start it it is expensive um i think year one is probably the most expensive at the moment um but you know being quite honest about you know how much you need there might not be you know not everyone gets a, a full that you know 100 percent scholarship everyone hears about it and you know we do this but they're not always out there so you know having these honest conversations with people like myself jack or whoever it might be and being very very transparent and honest at the start in terms of the fit and the fit for me is academics it is financial it is sport but it's also social and mental it's also looking at that mental matrix and just making sure that you do your research and it's great to go and think about the usa but you know take a step back and look at where you are going to thrive as an individual and also really, really understanding the needs and aspirations of a family and not 
charging down the route, um, you know, and going, well, we can't do this. Uh, I think that has been, I think that's going to be easier now because it is really competitive. Um, but listen to the people's advice and, and make sure that before you do it, just make that you have that really informed decision across all that mental matrix and all those kind of tick boxes as a family uh, and, and as an individual. And, and as I said, it's hard work. Um, I think one of the biggest things that we found from international students, especially from a sports perspective, is day one of preseason is tough. Mm. You know, I think there's a, a stat that 17% of all freshmen from international countries get injured within the first month. So make sure that you are prepared physically to go to the USA. Um, that is probably what they're the best in the world at is their conditioning and making sure that their student athletes are incredibly well conditioned. You might go to a, sorry, if you're on there, a Wellington, a Repton, a Cranley or whatever it might be. Um, you know, you finish, you might've had your speech day last weekend and then you, you finish your IB and you don't do anything. If you're going to the USA, just make sure you're prepared. And I think from a, you know, a physical perspective, that's been one of the things that's really stood out for us. And we've tried to do it as a company in, in, in creating something which we call Aspire Perform to help just make sure people stay on the pitch longer. Um, because if a coach has invested time and money in you as an individual and you don't play, you're not going to like it. He or she is not going to like it. So I think that there's two things there in terms of, you know, the competition, be realistic. And also from a physical perspective is that just make sure when you go, you turn, you turn ahead and, you know, you were in the right shape and, you know, you stay on the pitch longer. And, and that, that for me was an absolute eye opener in terms of that, that kind of 70% sort of, you know, stat in terms of international students. Yeah, that's pretty astonishing. Yeah. Um, and that's a really big tip actually, and not something that I consider because I think um, people, I mean, people do this in academics as well, that they, once they got in, they go, well, I'm in now. I can just go off the boil. And you, you realise how out of shape your mind or your body can get in those um, few months of not doing very much. Um, Jack, on that note, I'm interested in how, because Brett was talking about really finding the right fit university. Um, how did you decide where you were going to go and play when you went to America? Yeah, so it was interesting obviously I, I i never really thought about playing outside of england uh if, if i'm being you know honest um and then my agent called me one day and he he basically just said to me um you know the portland timbers have come in for you in the mls um and it was quite a quick turnaround but but my family's quite close and, and we did that we did what brett was saying in terms of I'll be honest, I didn't even know where Portland was because I'd never even heard of it because <laughs> it was always East Coast for me and, you know, Florida's and, and whatnot. And, 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 you know, I researched it and saw the culture and what the culture was like because that's a big thing, obviously. It's, it, America's such a big place. What I got to know is is every state you go to, it's just like a different country. It's like a different culture. It's just it's just madness. So, um, yeah, like, like, like Brett said, obviously, going and seeing that um you know if you can do the visits and visit the campuses brilliant if you can't then try and research as much as you can because you know it's a big part of it you might like the university but just not like the town or the city or you know whatever it may be so yeah that's definitely something you have to look into um but again i i just sort of threw myself into it um you know coming from from yorkshire originally it was obviously a long way to go and live in portland oregon but um yeah I think you've just got to embrace it you've got to embrace their culture you've got to embrace you know the things they do and and that's what I kind of did and and you know going from Portland Oregon um then to San Antonio Texas I mean that was just like completely different uh, but again just sort of tried to immerse myself in the culture and um you know and Americans are, are, are really friendly if if you know they can't do enough for you if if, if you're a nice person as well and you know, you, you you carry yourself in the right in the right way, you know, and you respect other people. Um, and yeah, and, the, and then I went to Arizona after that. So, yeah, I was definitely red for about two years living in Texas and, and Arizona. So because the climate's so hot. But um, yeah, again, it was just just got to prepare yourself physically, mentally. Um, like I said, it's no walk in the park. Um, you know, you're not going to go there and it's going to be a jolly up for four years. It's got to get your head down as well. And but the, the, 
the rewards are just, you know, on the other end, it's just, just crazy. I mean, my family friend, <clears throat> he, he's gone over there and has done his four years and now he's actually got a coaching job. He's staying out there for two more years and he's thinking about even doing his, um, his master's after that um, just because he loves it so much. And you, we hear so many, so many stories about that. Even obviously Brett could, Brett could write you a list, I'm sure, of people that have gone there and then ended up staying there as well. So, um, yeah, it's, um, it's something that is just like I say, it's not only the experience of sport, soccer, rugby, whatever it is, it's, it's the life experience and something that will stay with you for the rest of your life. Brilliant. I really like what you said about culture and finding the right fit there. I certainly resonate more with the, the Oregon culture than the... Um, <laughs> um, okay, let's go on to the next point. What can we expect in the next round? What are the big changes coming up? So, so Brett, anything on the horizon here that potential sports scholars should be looking out for? And when I say the next round, I mean those who are now thinking about um, applying and going out in 2023. Um, what should they be aware of? Yeah, well, uh, I think that the big one, obviously, and you can come on this, is obviously uh, test optional ACTs, SATs. You know where where we are on that. Um, uh, you know, I'll leave you to go and do that. I, it's you know there are certain universities which, obviously, I, I think we would advise people to still go and do those tests because I, I think it one it shows where you are. Um, it, you know that they understand. Um, and also where you might fit in that, it might also help merit aid. And this is obviously a very, very honest conversation that, that, that we need to have with, 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 you know, with the family. Um, at the moment, you know, I think 2023, if I'm correct, is still test optional as, as a year. Um, but, you know, there will be certain universities which we would certainly advise our clients to, you know, get a good score. Um, you know, I know for a fact, and, uh, you know, if, if you wanted to go to a Brown, which is, you know, best universities in the world, and, you know, you, you wanted to work with one of the best coaches in the world who supports clients there, then getting a decent score. And that would certainly help in terms of, of going to that. If you, you know, if you don't need to, then this is part of getting the fit right at the start and understanding your list and understanding kind of the timeline and what you need to do and what you don't need to do. And, um, you know, hopefully we can be really strong consultants in, in helping individuals maneuver their way through that. Um, I think the big thing for me um, with COVID finishing is visits. Go and visit. Go and look. Go and have a look. Um, you know, um, get a feel for what the campus life is like. Go and, you know, look at the environments. Um, this has been a massive, obviously, change that it's, you know, the country's, you know, USA has opened up again. And, you know, for me, this is such a big thing to, to get a feel for, you know, wow, I didn't realise it was like that. Or, wow, you know, that's great. Or, wow, I've just been on a camp with a coach and I hate him. So I'm not going to go there. And, you know, th these are really important things. So looking at you know, working with the admissions department, working with the coaches and organizing time to go and visit if you can do. I think it's a really, really good thing to go and do. Um, the big thing for me is timelines. Um, it's if you are if you're a year 11 now and you're finishing your GCSEs, um, I hope they're going really well being a teacher. Um, so best of luck after half term. And if you've had them already, um, you know, this is the time now, um, you know, if you are coming to the end of year 12 then and you 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 are thinking about going to the university we're getting tight um because you know you've got to look at the applications and you know the introductions to the coaches if you're in year 13 when obviously you're leaving now and it's you know it's done and dusted but don't be frightened of taking a year out because there are eligibility windows that might fit you as well so you know um if you are still thinking of the USA, then, you know, please get in contact with Jason, you know, especially if, if you are year 13 and you're taking year out because, you know, that timeline probably of about 14 months will work. But I think the biggest piece of advice is it's that, you know, it's not like UCAS. There are so many flows in this and, you know, we want to make sure that it doesn't undermine your school life, your sporting life, you're an academy or whatever it is. It works in partnership with what you do you know, works in partnership with your careers officers and it is an enjoyable experience because the end result could be amazing. So, you know, 
yeah, key, key, keys for me are timelines um, and also, you know, the chance that go and visit these places if you if you have the opportunity to, because that will sell you or help you, you know, in, in your in your overall decision. OK, that's great advice. And certainly um, a good thing now that the pandemic is nearing an end that we're able to go and do things in person again. Um, the, you've just touched on SAT and ACT. Um, I think NCAA did announce that it would be optional for 2023. Um, as we say with everything um, in America, things might change. Um, certainly on the academic side, there are plenty of colleges that require it, more and more requiring it. Public universities in um, Georgia, Tennessee, and Florida all require SAT. Um, MIT still require it, and so does Georgetown. Um, so whichever way you're applying, you have to be careful. And, and as Brett said, just because they might not require it doesn't mean that submitting a score won't help and doesn't mean that universities might not impose their own kind of academic standards on top as well. So be very, very careful there. Start early is always our advice. Um, just on that note, we do work with um, Aspire to offer discounts to, um, to Aspire students. So if you do, if you are an Aspire student and need some help with testing, we can. Um, I'll give you a link to courses and stuff at the end. Um, okay. Brett, what should potential sports scholars be doing right now? Um, well, if well, um, research, starting, if you haven't started, start. Um, if you're year 11, I think coming into year 11, year 12 is a really important time. And I'll, I'll say this just linking on to the SAT, ACTs. Um, you are in exam mode. So potentially doing an ACT, SAT, um, in September, October is a really great time to go and do it because you are still in that exam mode. If I was to go and do maths at the end of my year 12, I would have forgotten absolutely everything. So, you know, this is part of kind of the timeline in, in looking at if you are interested in going to the USA, then start speaking um, to careers officers, start having conversations with people like ourselves, with Jason and, you know, and looking at putting a timeline in place over the next 18 months because you know if you are interested in going to you know those universities that might expect uh, a score or would be good to have one getting a score while you're still in exam mode is really really good um and I, I think a really benefit thing to do people don't really don't understand that but I, I know for a fact that you know if you ask me to go and do my GCSE uh maths exam at the end of year 12 I, I would fail it um, being humanities based sports, sports and geography. There we go. Um, mm. So in terms of sports scholars it, right now, it's 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 working with with people like ourselves, um, doing your research list and really, really looking at if you're year 11 um, and, and starting this process, what the right fit is for you, um, getting video footage together, um, being assessed, um, having honest conversations um, with a Jack, a Brett, a Jason, and whether, you know, this is the right journey for you. If you're in year 12s now and you've been in this process or you want to start now, then the application windows are, are, are really, you know, they're getting close to start opening and, and you know, you should be having conversations with coaches um, and looking at really, really honing down on where you think you would thrive. Um, it, 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 it is not just emailing someone and, and hoping that you can get to a certain university that there has to be you have to be slightly more forensic about this and do your due diligence in terms of looking at where you would thrive as as an individual and i went back at the start in terms of that mental matrix that's absolutely key um you know getting prepped for um coach calls looking at your visits um you know looking at the half terms um you know to a certain extent committing um, if you, you know, if, if some of you are, you know, have, have been over, over there or, or you know, are, are, you know, I've had those conversations, but potentially probably I would say most of the people on the Zoom might be thinking, well, I'm interested in the USA. Um, if you're year 12, then you need to get to work and you, you, you know, you need to have those, those conversations as a family, as a family unit to say whether you want to go and do this and do your research year 11. For me, this is the perfect time, you know, um, start to you know really look at whether you want to go and do this yes you can apply to UCAS as well and do that and we would advise that as well 
um, to you know keep the options open um, and look at the different opportunities that you might have. But um, yeah, year 11, year 12, two different timelines, but um, year 12, you need to get to work, year 11, perfect timing. Brilliant. Yeah, same sort of advice that we always give as well. Year 11 is not too early, neither is year 10 for anything. Yeah. Um, always start doing stuff early. Um, I think uh, there's one more question here, which always comes up, and maybe you can give a, um, a very short answer to this, Brett, about the divisions, because people get very confused about the fact that NCAA has three divisions, um, and sometimes there's a lot of confusion about whether that means the university itself is better if it's a division one, which it doesn't. Um, no, it doesn't. No, I don't, you know, it's to do with, you know, really shortly finances, um, you know, NCAA recognition, um, the finances that go into, you know, supporting those those sports. So you've got a division one, division two and a division three. Um, you know, it, bluntly, there will be more money um, in division one um, based on the recognition of the overall athletic program. Um, division two, you know, Division Two might have great facilities um, and as good of facilities as a Division One. They're just not in that recognition sort of you know area in terms of of the, the, the finances that, that 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 they have. Division Three don't um, give sport aid, so to speak. Uh, I call we call it merit aid, school aid. They don't have sport aid, but they do have merit aid or you know school aid or different academic aid. Um, there will be, and I know for a fact that there are, um, you know, coaches of Division Three universities that are listening to this, um, that will be have as good of facilities, um, better programs, et cetera, et cetera, than Division One. So I think this goes back to the, the you know, the second one. One of the big changes, one of the common mistakes make is don't get hung up by Division One um you know uh, yes they have got some great programs and yes their standards might be up here but you know don't be frightened of looking at the different divisions because there could be a great fit for you and this is where we try to look as a company to you know open people's eyes to a really really good division two university yeah it might not have you know the financial clout of whatever but it could be the better fit for you you know financially it might be slightly cheaper it might not be but you know it might have different ways of, of supporting you sort of financially with, with the with the, the merit aid that they have so um you know there are some unbelievable well there are some unbelievable sporting environments in division one division two and division three it's 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 a, it's an exciting place to go and explore but for me you know, don't be frightened of looking at a division two or division three if you've just heard about division one on Coach Carter or whatever it might be. Okay, great. Thanks very much, Brett. Um, okay, we're at the end of those questions. So before we go on to the questions from the audience, I just want to put up a link here. If anyone wants to book in a call with us, um, you can always do so for free. Just go to our website, useducation.com forward slash free hyphen call. While we're on it, um, Brett and Jack, do you want to, to say what your email addresses are? Um, you could put them in the chat. Uh, we will forward them on to people afterwards. But for those who, uh, uh, those people who are listening on the recording, how do people get in touch with you? Well, it's quite simple. So it will be exactly the same. So it will be Brett, which is B-R-E-T-T -T, at aspireusa.uk.com. And then if you want Jack, which... I think probably most people will do because uh, um, you know slightly more handsome and younger and things like that. Um, <laughs> just just swap Brett for Jack. Um, so be Jack at aspireusa.uk.com. Brilliant, thanks. Okay, um, the, I'm just going to go to our last slide. I did promise to to let people know that um, if they want to book in courses, uh, you can go to our website for slash courses. We've got summer courses coming up. Great for those who are currently in year 11, moving into year 12. Um, and for those year 12s who really need to get started. Um, and uh, we've also got lots of other webinars coming up before the end of term. I think our next one is in uh, a week's time, which will be about um, extracurriculars. And then we've got another one a week after that talking about um, uh, various other things that I now can't remember. And, uh, and then one at the end of the year with me and David Hawkins talking about predictions for the future. Um, we also have private tuition and we also have diagnostic tests, BSAT and ACT. 
And of course, you can contact Brett and Jack if you want to talk about sports. And there's our contact details. Um, but I'm going to stop sharing right now. Um, there are a couple of questions here. I'm just going to encourage everyone else who's listening, please bung your questions in the Q&A box and we will answer them. Um, one question I think we've already answered here is when do SAT, ACT become mandatory? Well, the answer is in some cases they already are and in some cases they never will. Um, I know that sounds confusing, but it really is down to universities. In terms of the NCAA, which is one of the governing bodies for sports at college in America, it is currently test optional, which means you don't have to do the tests. That's not to say you can't. It may be that in the future, the NCAA requires the tests again. Um, but remember, in addition to that, there will be some colleges that require it, some that highly recommend it, some that where they say it's optional, some where they don't look. Um, so it's not a case that it's across the board that it's mandatory. Um, and another question I think you answered, Brett, is, um, is year 11 the best time to schedule a consultation and begin conversations? So if someone's in year 11 now, should they be talking to you? Yeah, I, I think moving from year 11 into year 12 is, is probably the perfect time. As you stated earlier, you know, we do work with year 10s and the, the USA actually start at year 10 in terms of going through this process. So um, yeah, um, perfect timing. Great. Yeah, so if you're in year 10 or year 11, no harm in having a chat with Brett or Jack or Holly or anyone now. Um, as I understand it, Brett, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but there's no obligation for them to, to call you and, and discuss ideas with you and, and see whether or not there's a chance, right? No, it's fine. We, 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 yeah, definitely. The more people that we can speak to, to guide and mentor at the start, to help them make the most informed decision, our process is, you know, we, we have a, you know, free consultation to start off with, and then we will be as honest and open as we can. We, you know, we look at a kind of an internal assessment and say, look, this is what we think. If it doesn't fit what a family wants, then they can go and do whatever. If it fits what a family wants, then, you know, and they want to proceed, then, then we can guide accordingly. So there's yeah. no commitment at the start. We just want to make sure that they make the most informed decision as soon as possible. Brilliant. Great. And, um, there's a question here about what are the financial implications of working with Aspire? Essentially, how much does it cost? I, I'd rather that we didn't go into that right now. Um, and there are, I certainly know that there are different packages, um, but you can contact Aspire for free and discuss with them. And uh, I think your packages might be on your website anyway. Um, but yes, of course, there is a financial implication. But what I would say is, and Brett alluded to this earlier, um, and again, I, my job is here is not to promote Aspire, it's really just to promote USA. Um, but the, the amount of money that can be won in scholarships is pretty phenomenal. The cost of going to university in America without any help whatsoever is in the hundreds of thousands of dollars. And then if you think about on top of that, the amount of money they spend on you in terms of facilities, coaches and stuff as a sports person, it's extremely, um, uh, high in terms of the amount of money that's being spent. So in terms of the money that you can save and actually save in terms of going to university, because in the UK, yes, you'll get a loan, but it will um, you'll have to pay it back. In America, if you're a really good sports person and very good academically, you could end up going and not paying anything at all and having a better and longer experience. Um, so it's worth doing that kind of um, cost benefit analysis um, when you're thinking about using external services and what the chances are of you being able to do it alone. Um, okay, uh, there's no other questions at the moment. Um, so I thought if we just finish off um, with Jack, do you want to just talk about some of your, let's say your favorite moment of playing soccer in America? Uh, <clears throat> favorite moment. So yeah, I guess, I guess one of my first games, uh, sorry, my first game, uh, so I'd flown into Portland, Oregon, uh, signed all the contracts, uh, looked at a place to live, and I think that was on like the Tuesday, and then by the Friday, we was flying to Orlando, because we were playing Orlando City away, so it was like, it was crazy for me, because obviously, I'd done, you know, a 12 and a half hour flight to Portland, and then it was another about six hours to back to Orlando, um, you know, got to play against Kaka against in my first game, so that was pretty cool. Um, <clears throat> I played, 
I pl- actually played in the game with, it was uh, Perlo's last ever professional game. And, and I played in that game. So that was pretty cool. Um, yeah, played against David Villa. Um, yeah, it was just all, all, all around a, a really good um, experience. Um, like I said, traveling, traveling around the States, you know, um, fortunately at the pro level, getting paid to do what I love, um, visiting all these different stadiums, which, you know, some of them are crazy. I mean, we played, played against uh, New England, which obviously they play at the Patriot Stadium. So, I mean, that's just like, it's just huge. So it's, yeah, it was, it was crazy experience, but one that, you know, like I said, will, will, will never leave me. Brilliant. And I think that's a good note to finish on. I just want to say thank you very much to everyone for attending and a big thank you to Jack and Brett from Aspire. Um, I, I know that we've given some really good information today about sports. If you need to know anything else about sports, then please do get in touch with Brett or Jack or Holly at Aspire. Um, if you go to their website, www.aspire.com.uk, I think. AspireUSA.uk. AspireUSA.com.uk. Thanks, Brett. Um, so thanks very much, everyone. And do book on for our next webinar next week. Bye-bye.